everyone i welcome you all to manupatra's webinar series focused on how to use technology for increased efficiency in legal operations technology has completely changed the way we live our lives whether it is at home or at work we are surrounded by technological revolutions the legal field too has gained manifold by the adoption of technology in its processes manupatra since its inception at the turn of the millennia has dedicated itself to drive the technological revolution of the legal industry it has always aimed to provide technological solutions to the legal industry that allows the professionals and students to not only perform better but to do so and with a lot of ease manupatra offers a suite of saas products catering to the diverse requirements of legal professionals and students at its core the idea is to introduce ease of process and reducing manual effort and time taken to perform tasks with this let's begin today's webinar on case management beyond case files how to use a case management software with my colleague mr abhay kapoor hi everybody this is abhay from manupatra thank you for joining us in such good numbers for this demonstration um so as my colleague suggested we are from manupatra i am abhay i am joined by my colleague ms manu kamna so we'll be taking you through the case management system so manupatra we are a 24 year old company so very well known in legal domain mostly for the legal research part so we also have other tools in terms of contract management compliance management litigation management so i particularly have been associated with the case management part for last 6 years so meeting advocates meeting journal councils meeting sometimes students also for to understand like what is their requirement what are they looking forward in a litigation management tool or a case management tool so what i'll try to do whatever information or whatever knowledge that i've gained over last 5 6 years in terms of getting an interaction with different kinds of clients in terms of understanding their requirements i will try to present here so that you are able to also access like in 2024 you if you go to any webinar if you go to any uh, like session you will get to know like artificial intelligence natural language processing machine learning there are a lot of things that are being thrown in the market right now but what is actually what is in a very meaningful way what are the few changes that you can do like a 10% change that will make the 80% of the difference in your particular law practice management or if some students are there so what is some things that you can look forward to in a like a realistic way right now okay so that is the scope for this uh, so just i'll just move on to my next slide which is why technology so uh, why this rush about the technology so technology is anything like scientific discovery that is helping you in practical ways okay so it can be anything a diary was a technology at some point in time somebody discovered paper somebody started writing on it to do list and everything today the times have changed we are living in a global world everything is interconnected we are working through our phones through our tabs through our desktop we are consuming media x y z we are creating mails text messages everything is data today so in this world which is very different from the world of 20 years ago 10 years ago how do you make of technology and especially in a field which is legal so which has historically been on like precedents there has been a certain hierarchy certain certain things how they were done at some point in time so majorly we get a resistance from higher ups like seniors are used to doing things in a particular way juniors they they know how to access technology they are grown with a particular thing so put this push is coming from the honorable high courts itself like in 2013 uh, supreme court launched this e courts program which has clearly transformed how you used to go to your checklist how you used to maintain your diary everything is being done through the court sites today and even like many courts like delhi high court kerala high court we are aware of they are insisting on submissions through online so this is again something this is something today in today's day and age this is something a do like you have to do it there is no choice again like in terms of becoming more agile also that is also very very important so we saw what happened in pandemic 2020 like lot of people who do not have those kind of infrastructure they were found missing something so 
like these are the changes are here to stay people are going to work from different places there might be times that you are traveling to a different port and you suddenly require one file that was kept in your office like back in uh, your head office so if you need that how to focus on that one the third one is creating a second brain so this is where like like artificial intelligence comes in it where whatever you have stored in the past suppose you were working on some important agreement in 2017 and in today's date, you are working on a similar document. You want to refer back to the same document or somebody new in your organization is working on that document. You want to pass it on to him. Do you have that document in place? Uh, so creating a memory for a particular organization, for a law firm, for any organization. So you don't, you are not repeating same task again and again. There, there are certain processes that are in place that are taking care of it. So these are the few things that why you should be interested in technology and this is the high time why you should be. The fourth and the most important thing is overcome the resistance that is there in the... So for that, what you can do is you can start small. Like in terms of there is, you don't have to go and buy yourself a complete litigation or a complete case management solution. You can start small, like start with lit tools also available. So you can start small and whatever is looking good for you right now, you can start with that and you can then move on to the next one. So it can be a step-by-step -step process. Okay. So let's begin with the presentation part of it where I'll just not speak. I'll show you things. So that is also one important part. Seeing is believing. So one is like one of the low hanging fruits for you would be litigation tracking. So it is very simple. Like 10,000 quotes in today's day and age are online. Okay. So these are updating cause list, they are sending orders, everything is done on their website. So, but these 10,000 quotes might be like in different consumer forums. There is a different website for a high court. There might be a different website for a district court. There is different website for numerous consumer forums, CAT, NCLT, NGT, these but all people have different websites. How do you monitor these things from one place? Okay. Or in terms of how do you access details? Like in terms of if an order comes, how do you access like this is a reserved for judgment suppose tomorrow it comes out and your client is first at it you you are later so it, it does not look well so how do you make sure that that does not happen okay so one is like tracking your cases from these courts the second is getting the updates online so for that what we have in place so something similar that you can also look into is like a system like this which gives you an interface of what is happening. So this is like, I can see how many matters are there, like 244 matters are there. These many number of clients are there. This is the task. This is my to-do list for today. How many matters might have been disposed are archived. So these are also saved. So in future, if I require them that are available to me. So in like day in and day out, you might not know what is happening in my law firm. Like you are working on something, you are going from one hearing to another, but to come back and to get a whole picture at one sense, like what is happening, how many matters are there at a, like a pending stage? What are the tasks that are still to be done on my part? How many invoices are still pending at the, this level? So you can customize your own dashboard. So that first thing that you see when you get into the website, you see that this is what is happening. This is what is important to me. And what you start to notice that automatically becomes bigger. So in terms of the code coverage, you can start with like any, anything like you can start with, there can be n number of cases. You might be also handling advisory dispute resolution, litigation, all these kind of cases are after all matters. So you can create different kinds of matters within the same system. For litigation, especially you can use this particular thing, which is tracking. So which is, you just put in your details once. Say I'm practicing in say Delhi High Court. So I can put in Delhi High Court. This is a matter type, matter number, matter year. You can put it here. And next time, whenever this matter is coming up for a next hearing or approval, so that will automatically get captured from the system. Okay, similar for your district courts. I can see for all my district courts also. So put in the CNR number once and after that, whatever is happening, any order, any hearing update, any cause list update that is automatically getting fetched. Okay. Similar goes for my tribunals. These are the list of tribunals that a good system has. So one thing that you need to keep an eye on is are these covering the list of tribunals that I am going to. So, or if it is available online, so it should cover that. 
So this might be consumer forums, DRT. So all these are also available. So you can just put in here, put in the matter type, matter number, matter year once. And anytime this is getting updated again, so that is automatically getting captured. So this saves a lot of my time so that you don't have to worry in terms of like if a, suppose I was speaking to somebody in Kerala High Court, they go to the website every day and case by case they search for each and every day is my matter listed the next day because they're never sure that when is the next hearing date coming up. It is, gets updated one day or two days prior. So that takes a lot of man hours, that takes up a lot of precious time from your lawyers, from your juniors point of view. And if you give them that time, they'll be able to better use it in terms of developing other legal acumen. So that can be done. Like in terms of my matters, once I've added a particular matter in my case, so I'll be able to go to my matters and I'll be able to see the list of the matters that are there. Okay, so once I go here, I'm able to see these are the number of matters that are ongoing. I can see if I'm interested in a particular court decision. Suppose I have to go to court tomorrow. So all my notes are available here. If I want to access the last order for a particular case, I can click on to this. I'll be able to get the whatever has been like it's a disposed case. So I want to read the judgment, what, what happened. So all that orders this got listed on the same day, got disposed on the same day. This was the order. So all these orders are automatically available to you. Anytime a new order comes, that is automatically being sent to your mail. Okay. So takes care of my part where I'm not managing everything on my own. Everything that is coming to the court is getting delivered here. I can also set alerts for my clients. Okay, so I can select say for next hearing date. So again, there is a lot of to and fro that happens between an advocate and a client. Like you are not taking care of my matter and this is not happening correctly. So if you have systems in place where you can set up accountability automatically. So anytime there is a next uh, hearing date that is coming up, you can put in the mobile number and the email ID of that person. And they are getting the automatic alert from the system. Like uh, for two days prior to the matter, every day, every time they get an alert. So they'll automatically be more responsible that the lawyer that I'm engaged in is taking care of me in terms of it, is uh, informing me on what is happening. So that can be done from the same system. Uh, if I go to back to my matters and like th this can also be used in terms of getting more reports. Like suppose you are working for tomorrow, you are a law firm and you are working with a with a corporate or suppose you are a corporate only you want to create reports from the system okay so somebody might have asked you like for a particular client how many matters are there which are pending so i can select like the name of the client here say i select indian oil and i'll be able to see how many matters are there for indian oil how many are pending this is the status and i want to get more details like what is the name of the client has he made the payment? How many payments are due on his part? Other information when the last payment was received? Um, when was this started? So all these details, whatever I've fed in the system, I'll be able to bring it here. So at a bird eye view, I'm able to capture all the details. So tomorrow when I'm speaking to the client after the hearing, I know that this is the amount that is to yet to be paid. This is, uh, this is the discussion that we had had in the last. So everything is in your fingertip once there is a system in place. So again, allows you that kind of an accessibility. Once you provide it in cloud, you will be able to go to that particular website and get the access. So if I go to my Gmail account and show you why the orders are looking like, so I'll go to the website, my Gmail to show you the orders. So I go here and I go to my personal email ID. Right. So this is giving me like this will be my own folder. So your different team members can also have their own kind of a login or a tool account where they can log in and they'll be able to see. Say this is my cause list for like today's day, 22nd February. And this is giving me the list. Like what are the different matters that were listed? So I can see like these are the two, three matters that are listed. And this is the cause list also. So the cause list list is also available to me from here. Again, every time it's asking me to, I think there's some issue.
any time the, this is this matter is coming i'm able to see the next hearing dates the cause list any order that is coming so that is also being sent on my mail so i'm not dependent on the court side whether it's working even like for consumer forums we often hear from clients that this is not working this is not uh, there so this can because it's everything all the orders is in the cloud so you can access this system and you will be able to get the next hearing dates and orders and everything so a substantial part of your tracking a particular case or managing your caseload or developing reports also that can be managed from the same system provided that you have put in the uh, you have put in the case number and everything in place so this is a very easy low hanging fruit that you can use in your daily practice to ensure that you are at least going to all the matters and whatever matters are coming up, you are getting orders on time. So that is something that is there. So if I go to this one, go to the next one. So this is for the litigation tracking, getting real-time alerts on your email. Uh, for Even for non-litigation lawyers, some of our clients are GST people who, are, who don't go to court that often, but they have matters that they want to respond to. So they can create their matters. They can work internally. So that can be done from the system. The second one is the document management. So again, this is one of the important pain points for the clients or for the advocates that I we go to lawyers and we see like often in their kitchens, they have documents in the drawing room, they have documents. So documents are everywhere. And because these are important documents, these are they are not very fond of uh, like letting them go also. So having one document system, like because we are creating so many documents, in a particular place so that anything that you want to access in future is easily accessible to you. So that is a very, very important part of any case management tool. So what I'll do is I'll show you also like uh, what it can do for you currently. So for any case I can go into and um, so ideally what should be there is that particular document should be tagged with the case. Okay, so whenever I'm going to that case folder, I'm able to see the documents as well. So if I have to find documents separately and the case is somewhere else, then it becomes difficult or if it's in my local drive, it again becomes difficult because I'm not able to locate it like when I'm in the court or when I'm sitting with the client or when I'm traveling somewhere. So again, these documents have to be linked with that particular matter. You can create number of folders like for your drafts, for your lease documents, for your judgments, all these like you can create these files from here. And if I go into the next, I can again see these are the different documents that I've created for my judgments that I'm reading for this, even for the drafts that I'm working on a particular document that is there. One thing more that you can do is like there might be some free time that you have between hearings or you might be sitting in the airport. You want to do some drafting and it, it can be done online also or somebody has uh, typed something, sent it to you and you want to review what is what is correct or what is not. So if a cloud management system also allows you to do it online. So you can just type whatever they have, you can see what they've typed, you can make corrections on this one. You will be able to work collaboratively in two, three, like two, three people are working on the same agreement. They can, everybody has some input, they can mark their comments here. You will be able to see different comments. So that can also be done. So collaboration is also a very important part that a cloud system brings into place so that even people might be sitting different places, they'll be able to collaborate on the same document. Again, there might be certain versioning is also there. So if like, if there are two, three people, they're downloading it, sending among each other. So what was the last version that was shared? So these are the different versions. Controls should also be there where you are able to access the last documents. Again, secrecy is very important. Like um, there might be people that are coming to your law firm, going out, and now you're not able to see like, is the important security document how you should proceed with it. So you can store the document history also who accessed this document when this was accessed uh, or if you want to lock it, like if you don't want anybody else in the team to, to view it, so you can have a super secrecy also. So there is like, this is a kind of a document management that you should look into where you are able to store all your documents in one place. You are able to collaborate. You can store all kinds of documents. Again, space is something that you can look into. Like how many this is available to that particular user so that can be done and in terms of speed like what are the different mp4s excel all kinds of files you can store so these are the basic things that you can consider again security for your documents is something very very pivotal so you should check whether they have a vapt certification whether they have a iso certification 
who has the control of the documents, whether anybody else is able to access the documents or not. So in any good software, because it is designed by a particular company who has already th thought about these things and taken into consideration the security part. So that will also be there. So just for your documents, you need to make sure that everything is there in terms of ISO certificates, in terms of protection. So that can also be taken care of. Okay, let's move on to the next part. So which is the client experience. So again, client experience, how to enhance client interactions, say orders and these things like through the website only. So again, client in today's day and age, client is very, very active. So we being Manupatra, many a time clients come to us that we want to have a subscription from Manupatra because we want to research on our own because we don't trust our lawyers. So uh, there might be certain situations because they are, they are very much attuned to their case. They want to know everything. They are following you up with everything. That comes because there's a lack of trust also between the two parties. So you can also create a kind of a trust if you want. You can create your own, like give them access in terms of accountability whenever a next hearing is coming up, order is coming up that is being sent to them. So we have a concept for this, which is a uh, council portal or what we can also call a client portal. So client portal basically will give the access to only the selected matters that are available with the, with the client. So whatever you are representing for that matter or whatever that is accessible. So that can be accessed from here. I can, whatever documents I have shared them with them in the past, that will also be available to them. So all my document exchange that is happening between the law firm and between the particular client that is happening online. So you can just share a particular document. This will be visible here. They can like, you can give them rights also. View, download, edit, whatever rights. So for a selected document, you want to give them selected rights only. So that is also possible. So you can share those documents, whatever, whenever they have a query or whenever they want to share something with you or regarding any matter that you are dealing with. So you can uh, put in a subject note. They can put in an attachment that goes to you. It will come to your email ID as well as an attachment. And it will be located here also. So gives them a clear outlet to have a communication. So they don't have to call you like 12 a.m. in the night to ask you something. Everything that you have discussed is available here. All the documents that were exchanged were available here. And on top of that, whatever hearing updates that you are receiving from the system for your their hearings or update, they are also getting it from here. So they are also aware on what is happening for the particular matter. So a lot of communication that is redundant that can be taken care of from the same system. So even if you are handling certain kinds of notices from them, so that can also be handled. So giving them like more accountability, giving them more uh, services like this where they are able to transparently see what is happening on this matter. Uh, like what are the documents that you are working on. If you want to share it with them, that can also be done. So this is for selective clients where you want to share like it's a big corporate client for that client you want to have this kind of a system so you can have that so that they are aware of this okay so next will be for your client experience this is what you can do and of course you can set alerts for them also for the next hearings billing and report management now billing is something that we come across a lot during our interactions with the client so billing they ask for us like this is, we want to, we are looking for a billing software. So this is something that people know is very, very key to the operation and they want to automate it as soon as possible. So that, that is one thing. Report management is also coming into the picture where they are also looking for the time entries and everything, how to do it, like how I can organize my firm in a way that everything is accessible or I am sitting in the top. I have two, three law offices. I am able to see what is happening with each and every person. I will be able to see what is what is the progress on a particular case. That can also be done from the same system. So that is possible through, through this particular SaaS platforms that are available. So let me go into the billing part first where you can create like look into a billing system. Now billing system is important. Like if you have some corporate clients, especially big ones, you will see that they have a very different requirements in terms of invoices that it should have this number. It should have that number. It should be looking like this. So if you have a good template in place, okay, so that takes care of a lot of things in terms of uh, whenever the payment is getting delayed or where they are not getting a kind of an assurance, so that can be taken care. So firstly, that you should work like some ready-made templates will be available with the, uh, with the provider or you can work with them to create your own template so that it is looking good and it is looking professional. 
So anybody who are sharing this detail with, they are able to see this is the invoice details. This is the number. I have to share it on this number. And all my details are coming here itself. Okay. If you want to send them like reminders for the invoice. So that can also be done from the same system. So you can send them reminders from here. You can share it over the client portal. If same invoices is getting repeated, that can be done. You will be able to get a comprehensive view, like how many pending invoices are there for this particular client. So I can select the name of the client and see the list of the invoices that are pending. So next time I'm having a meeting with him, I can like export it into an Excel. And I can say these, these are the uh, pending invoices that needs to be discussed first. So again, to have that handy on the cloud, it becomes very important. And also like if you want to create an invoice, it's a Sunday, your client calls you. So we need an invoice. We are processing it today. So you should be able to give them the invoice right there and then. So you cannot say like tomorrow the office will open, then I will be able to generate. So if you have the power to generate the invoice, like it will take you two, three steps. Just click on new invoice, select the name of the client, put in the amount and you can generate it from there and share it from the portal itself. So it will be helpful to, you will be less dependent on your like uh, office staff for each and everything and you don't have to bother them also. And they'll also need us like a system to do it. So that if it is online, it is available for them also. They can sit at home and they can generate this invoice for you and send it over. So again, that thoughtfulness will be required on your part. So this is for billing. The reports is also there for reports. You can generate like in terms of matters, or in terms of expense generated, how many expense have generated? Suppose your juniors are going to the court, they are putting certain fees, stamp duty, everything that they are doing. So you can directly put it here and like how much expense was created and you can give them a, like they do like after a week, after a month, whatever spend that they have done. Again, makes my system more organized. Anytime I have a query regarding expenses, instead of going to my accounts department, I can come here, I'll be able to see. Same for time entry. Now time entry is certain thing like it's a very new concept for Indian lawyers. Initially, when we used to go to them, say you can do time entry from this, they, they nobody does time entry. So right now we have seen change in last two or three years. We, we have seen this evolve. Like many law firms today are wanting a good time entry tool so that they whatever they are doing in terms of billable, non-billable hours, whatever the associates are doing, they are able to put it in the system at the end of the month they can review it or they can generate like invoices based on these time entries, how many time entries were done on a particular thing. So it gives you a kind of a reporting outlook. So where are your resources are being used and where it can be used better. So those can also be used once you start documenting this from a time entry point of view. Same for activity, how many activity have been done by which user, user wise, if you want to generate reports, if you want to see how many matters are there in which court, how many are at pending stage, all that you can do from a system. So again, having one system, what it allows you to do, and if you have it online, what it will allow you to do is to have a sense of data that you can use. That will be a meaningful data that you have created over the years, and you will be able to use it to create better strategy to grow your law firm, to grow your business. So again, everything that you put into the software 10 times come back to you. So this is where the technology can help you in terms of developing a good, just a few closing remarks for me. So in terms of what we have already seen, like in terms of uh, we go to lawyers and often like we meet them 8, 8, 30, 9, because till that time they are having discussions, meetings with the clients. They are going to preparing for the next days cases so everything is happening and so this becomes a lot of haphazard way on how to control who is doing what it they it's become very difficult for them to manage so having a good technological system that is thought through all these different scenarios so that helps there might be like instead of focusing on routine tasks they'll be able to strategize more that can happen where they have more time in terms of thinking or in terms of growing the organization there is also a case for a high turnover in law firms. There might people might come in and they leave very often. So there might be a problem with the privacy of the documents, with the clients and everything because we are ultimately focused on clients. So that becomes a cause of concern. So if you have a knowledge management folder, so anybody new comes into the organization, you already have a folder for them to, uh, to get familiar with the organization and everything. So that can always help. And manual processes, again, 
I have prone to errors. So somebody might be working from 9 a.m. at 6 p.m., 6.30, 7 p.m., the productivity will go down. It will not happen with the machine. So anytime they are tracking a particular case, they'll crawl 24-7. Whatever is happening on the code, then they'll be able to capture. So depending on manual uh, online processes, wherever it's possible, it cannot be 100%, but wherever it's possible, that makes a big impact in reducing the number of errors and delays that will happen over time. So these are the few takeaways in terms of billing management, if you want to consider to have a repository for the invoicing online or for document you want to consider like particular case should be tagged with the document so that you are able to access those. You should be able to collaborate online without doing something. Whenever you are considering any uh, tool, you should consider how good the app is, whether you are able to see the hearing dates, orders. You, know, you should be able to find out whether you are getting the right alerts at the right time or whether the alerts are coming or not. Sometimes they don't even send the alerts. So these are the few things that you can look into in terms of a realistic way. So you know, when you are considering for a case management tool at this point in time, there is more technology to come. Of course, there is a lot of talk for artificial intelligence and what all that can do over the next few years. But that is still at a native stage. And once that is there, so we will have an update on this one. So this is where we stand now. In terms of if there are any queries, we'll be happy to take them. So I can move on to the next page. So I think Manukamna has already been noting the questions. Anything that you would need to focus on? Hello, everyone. I'm back again. <laughs> yes, I have been noting questions indeed. Uh, we would be taking up them up one by one. I answered a few on the chat uh, as I could, but uh, let's get into more detail into all of those questions. Some of them were very uh, specific as to what they what they want. So that was really insightful to see that our uh, audience knows what we're talking about. So let's get into it. Uh, so let's take up the first one, which was, can we search cases by uh, company names? Please show demo for the same. Uh, so, so, sir, you can take this up. Okay. So basically, like if you want to search a particular case by the name, so suppose there are two ways to go about it. One is our regular Manupatra. So if you're looking for a new judgment, you can go to Manupatra and you will be able to find that case but if you want to say if you're looking for a case that you have stored in the system suppose there was some case that you were working on previously and uh, you have stored it somewhere you don't know where to find it or in which uh, like file or which folder this is in so we have this option where you can search with a file name in free text so anytime there is like any text that is coming suppose you don't even recall the name of the case you can search from here and anywhere that is there in the in the system where this word is coming where this document might be there so it will search those documents so that you are able to retrieve these documents so in the system so if you are looking for an integration with manupatra so this particular system does that and you can also consider in other tools like whether they are giving such kind of support where you will be able to link your whatever you are doing in terms of research with the tool also hope that answers your question oh uh, yes so let's take up the uh, next one. Does the case data need to be fed manually or does the capture the information automatically from the code CIS? Okay. So this is a very important question. This is a kind of a question that a, a corporate throws us at a, a lot of time. Like, can you, we have a name of a particular company. Can you see the cases and can you find out all those cases by the system? So a smart system should be able to do that. So if you want, if you're looking for a particular case and it might be, you might not know the case number or anything. So you can search by the name of the party, say Tata Motors or Tata Global, Tata Sense. So here what I'm doing is I'm doing a simple search on Tata and I've given a particular uh, filter for Supreme Court or High Court. Even I want to search in district courts, I can do that. So with a good system, you will be able to search within different courts from the same. If you want to look for other courts also, that can be done. So yes, you will be able to search through a party name also, but you again have to add it. So we, the system will not add it at this point in time based on what it thinks it's right for you, but you have to add it itself. Like this is my case. I want to add it in my system so that I can track it further. 
So that can be done. Right. So I hope that answered it. So one, this is a very good one. The general thing that we get out of uh, technological tools is that what will, what will be the backup in case the digital record wipes off because of some technical issues? Right. What appreciating that the software reduces a lot of life, uh, sorry, file in case management, but technical snags and how to take it into within short time. Right. So again, so this is one of the like the questions that at the like everything is done. This is the question that people ask. That this is one of the roadblocks for us. So how to trust the technology which is cloud? So first thing that you should consider is what kind of a cloud that they are using. Okay, so uh, the whether the cloud is in which whether it's um, it's available in um, which kind of a cloud they are storing. Is it a private cloud? Is it Microsoft Azure? Is it Amazon? So you have to take care of those things. The other things that you need to take care of is whether the system is to like, is there an encryption involved? So HTTPS integration is there, whether the system they have taken some of, there are some third parties that do these kind of a manual checkup for a, on a particular system. So if I go to security, so there might be some compliances that need to be followed, like VAPT certification, ISO certification, those, those can be looked into. Or what is the password policy like? So whether there is a, like, suppose you, if you want to get a OTP on your message, like before you are logging in every time it should ask for a OTP because you have a lot of confidential information. So that should be taken care of. Role based in terms of backup, as somebody rightly said, whether they are taking regular backups and like in how many servers the, uh, this document is stored. So for example, in this one, we have three servers where the same document gets saved. So even if there is something happens on the first server, there are two other servers that are a backup server to this. So again, these are the small, small things that you have to take in care whenever you are signing with some other, some company, you just don't have to look at the commercials and everything. You also have to look in whether my documents, whether the company that I'm trusting my information is uh, storing it in a way that is right. So you can look for certifications. You can look for whether what kind of encryption they are using and whether they have a backup thing like we've already asked. Right. So let's get on to the next one. So can the software take care of the already existing documents in my drive? Is there an automation feature for this? Right. Okay. So this is again, I am just strictly answering based on this. So this is possible in the system where you can have your own, like so some document is there lying on your drive and you want to upload it in the system. Okay. So in this system, we have a my case drive where you can install that particular software and in any time a document is uploaded in that folder that automatically gets transferred to your my case system. So you don't have to manually update things. And so this is again, something that you have to look into, like whenever you are onboarding something, whether they have a integration where you can update documents and you don't have to manually do it or even for if you're looking for case transfer sometimes they have a migration team also which will help you migrate all the cases or which will help you onboard your documents also so you have to check on that one whether they have a good enough migration team and uh, when can they do it right so if with, uh, in addition to that i have also mentioned in the chat that we do provide a one-time migration services whereby you won't have to deal with the bulk of documents as we move to the tool. Our focus entirely is to ensure that there is smooth process and on onboarding. So let's go on to the next one. To ensure the utmost protection of personal data, I seek assurance regarding the following. Uh, can you provide details on the measures in place of safeguard the personal details of clients and myself entered into the my case website the second question this person asked is what guarantees can you offer that personal information such as phone numbers and email addresses will not be shared spammed or sold to third parties third question that comes is how does my case prevent the misuse of client data for marketing purposes or any other authorized activities so i have to say the dedication to client security client data security is commendable and we do cater to that the details will be shared by, by Vitabi, sir. Right. So in terms of the information, so again, this is one of the most important things. I've been saying it again and again. Security is something that comes up again and again in our discussions. 
with both the corporate as well as with the law firms where they don't they want their information to be because it's highly critical in nature it should be safe the first is the nda so anytime we get into a contract with anybody there is a nda agreement that is signed between the two parties so you can already see that we don't even have the names of the clients that we have in the system so that strong is our nda in terms of having that non-disclosure agreement apart from that we already have in place in terms of security that this is we have state class uh, things where you can store your documents in the particular place all the audits are happening at right and point in time and what we ensure is like nobody from the inside Manupatra is able to access that document. If you have changed your password, the security is so strict that nobody except you who has the username password will be able to access any kind of documents, any kind of data, anything that even the top server, the admin of the, the super admin that we call, they see everything in encrypted format. So nothing is available for... Uh, the external users, both who are working in Manupatra and for somebody who is using it outside Manupatra, there is no chance because the same uh, software or same cloud servers that we are using, many of the banks are using the same servers. For a matter of case, many banks are using this same system, my case, on cloud, to store their documents, to get their matter tracked. So everything is taken care of in terms of assuring you in terms of security so uh, we can also have a like a separate it meeting where they can have all we can show them all kinds of documents vapt iso certifications that we have done over the years to ensure that even the third party has given us a good ratings in terms of storing the documents in at right places right so uh, there is the next up is in case any matter is presently going on about in two three courts appeals or issues pertaining to tenancy simultaneously can it be used centrally at one place right so that is one of the things that you can do from the system where you can whatever cases that you have stored in the system so be it like these are the three cases but multiple cases that are going on you will be able to store them in one place and you will be able to see them also so anytime you want to access them that can be done right uh, so we do have, as I had mentioned in earlier in the okay. chat as well, right. all uh, all the cases across those will be available for you to view in one place. Uh, then second up is how is this helpful for an in-house legal department? Okay, so this is extremely extremely helpful for a legal department because many a times there is a separate uh, like a webinar we have which is on CLD which is a corporate legal department which helps the in-house legal teams to. Uh, use a tool that that is like my case for but for corporates that is going to be a separate webinar uh, Manu Kamna can give you the date but also in terms of this particular software for litigation tracking only it becomes very important because uh, we have a feature in the software which is called a proactive alert so suppose you are a some consumer brand sitting in Mumbai your head office is in Mumbai somebody used your product in Patna and they filed a con in consumer forum a case against you. Now you don't know the where, how, on when the case is filed, what is the information. Suppose the notice does not reach you on time. What happens then? So there might be an ex parte order that is issued against the company. And all this is happening without the company knowing that there is this case that is going on. So this is one of the important job of a corporate legal department to handle litigation, to handle notices from the same system. So this system allows you in a way to like whenever this case is filed, you are getting an email alert that is a new case. Now you can track it also like whenever this uh, this uh, lawyer that you have hired in Patna, whether he is appearing for this case or not. So that also you are able to track from the system. Whether the judgments that we are receiving, whether this uh, particular advocate is giving me right results or most of the cases that he is filing are going against me. So you can generate that kind of a report from the system. So again, it is the requirement from a corporate department is many much for fold because they are sitting in one place and they want to monitor all these different cases, monitor all these different counsels from the same system. So it is extremely helpful even for like storing documents. If you have teams sitting in Gurgaon, Mumbai, Bangalore, there are three different legal teams. They want to communicate with each other. Again, a system like this will be very, very beneficial. Any other Yes, uh, we do have a lot actually. Right. <laughs> so, 
uh, let's take up the next one. What happens for tribunals which you do not have an online database like ADM codes or FSAT, etc.? Right, that is a very valid question. So for that, what we do is, so there is in the add matter tab, there is always a section for add a code. So add a code are those codes which are not online present, okay, which don't have a big online presence. They or they do not upload their cause list, they do not upload their orders. So for those cases, there is this uh, list of special codes that are available. So you can add it here. And many time, they, this is an arbitration matter, you can manually update the dates. So that all my team members are aware on that date, they are getting the email alert. Anytime there is an order, you can upload the order itself. So the work of uploading or manually updating the next hearing date will be on you. And you will be able to get the alerts from the system and any orders that is updated, that also will be available to the rest of the users. But you have to do it manually where it is not online present. Right. So that answers that one. So let's go on to how do you ensure personal information is kept safe? What is the architecture of the software? So, sir, for that one, uh, let me take that up. It is a very specific technical question that uh, that is there. We already have provided that we are certified by the industry best standards of certifications in terms of security. But if you would like to know more about it, we can discuss this detail with regards to your concerns and everything else around it. Uh, on a one-on-one -on -one call basis so that we can provide you a dedicated resolution of all your queries. Uh, moving on to the next one. In case any corporate is having so many advocates and have distributed cases to them, so I understand that the search from repository of core public domain, therefore software will give the information only concerning case entrusted with in individual ad advocate law firm. Please confirm. So I think what they're trying to ask is since there will be so many advocates of one particular corporate, how do how does the tool manage that? Right. So we have a portal like there is a client portal that is there. We also have a council portal that is also available. So uh, we have like a multiple big banks are using this system. So they also have multiple councils that are using this. So for these councils, they can access the system from uh, from this. So like whenever they want to update something, communication, hearing. So the system is well equipped, like 80,000, 90,000 cases. Also, if there is a, uh, like a bank has an N number of councils are there. So it's able to handle them fairly well in terms of updating or in terms of the councils should also be getting the email alerts, sharing alerts, order alerts. And they can pass over whatever communication documents that is happening. And for that, any document that you are interested in, you can search, go to that folder, you'll be able to access. So it worked well, it scales well. So any SaaS software or especially litigation software it should be taken in consideration that today we have 50 cases, but it might be 500 cases. God forbid, it should not. But suppose it's 100 cases tomorrow, it should be able to take that workload. So it has been designed in a way tomorrow your team might go from five members to 10 members. So it should be able to absorb those uh, changes in the system so that this particular system at least has been well built for. All right. So let's get to what is the cost of this management software and a good and useful software for some small law firms and individuals. Please share the cost of software module wise and as a whole. Uh, I'm going to put down the uh, email ID that all of us, all of you can uh, contact us on if you would like to know more about this. Uh, let's put down contact at the rate Manu Patra uh, for this. The, another email ID is on your screens right now. Uh, please do get in touch with us and then we can address this shortly. For any kind of queries that you are interested in regarding the software or taking a personal demo also because due to the time constraints also, we cannot answer all the questions. So you can just write down to us at contact at the rate mycase.in or if you want to like a personalized demo or if you have some queries. So just write down to in the contact at the rate mycase or contact at the rate Manupatra. We'll be getting back to you promptly and answering all your questions there as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. It was great hosting you all. And I hope to see you again on the Tuesday for compliance and then on 29th for AI and law, the practice side of it. So thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for joining this call.